Welcome back to the Bitcoin Layer. I'm Nick Bhatia, and in today's episode, we break down the latest paper from the Bank of International Settlements and explain why Bitcoin is destined to be the reserve asset in a CBDC future. At the Bitcoin Layer, we are advocates of self-custody. And there's no easier way to self-custody your Bitcoin than Envoy. Stay tuned to the video to find out more. All right, here I have a paper for you. It's titled, A Blueprint for the Future Monetary System. Now, despite not mentioning the word Bitcoin a single time, I can't imagine a better argument for why Bitcoin will continue to operate as this reserve asset in a digital currency future. So... The paper's premise is about the tokenization of everything in the financial system, including central bank money, bank money, and other asset classes such as stocks and bonds. The paper also suggests that central bank digital currencies be used and actually change the architecture of how settlements happen. So let's go through and explain what the BIS has as its thesis here. Now, first of all, the Bank of International Settlements gives a little bit of monetary history similar to layered money in that it shows money went from physical gold and silver and evolved through bills of exchange to become liability-like. So the paper money that we have is a liability of the central bank. Your checking account deposit is the liability of commercial banks. So money has taken on this liability form in the last few hundred years, and our money that we use in the dollar system is all liability-based. Bitcoin is different. Bitcoin is an asset. It's not the liability of any financial institution. And so Bitcoin, as a non-liability money, is similar to only one thing in monetary history, and that's precious metal. So Bitcoin is only analogous to precious metal, whereas the current monetary system is a liability-based system. And so these two things are distinct, okay? That's the first and most important thing to understand before we go through this paper. Now, here's the thesis. This year's special chapter argues that the monetary system could be on the cusp of another major technological leap in the form of tokenization. Tokenization is the process of representing claims digitally on a programmable platform. So tokenization of everything is the dream of the BIS. Tokenization of central bank money, which would be central bank digital currencies. Tokenization of private bank money, which currently is deposits. It's going towards stable coins, but this paper argues instead of tokenized deposits and actually classifies them different as stable coins. It's suggesting tokenization of stocks and government bonds as well. And in the tokenization of central bank money, bank money, and other asset classes, it's suggesting a programmable platform or also known as a unified ledger that allows all of these tokens to operate interchangeably from a technology perspective. And see how the BIS is positing this transition as a natural occurrence. It says here that this tokenization process can be seen as the next logical step in the long evolutionary arc of record keeping and asset transfer. Now, why does the BIS make the suggestion that we should tokenize everything and make everything in the financial system interoperable? It's suggesting this because the main problem with current privately issued money, and that's most of the money that we use, issued by either banks or other financial institutions, all of that money exists in a very siloed way. Okay, that means separated or segregated. The paper says, think of the way digital money currently operates and how payments are made. Money sits at the edges of communication networks where it resides in siloed 
proprietary databases operated by banks and non-banks. So this is the idea of PayPal, JP Morgan, Citibank, Visa, all having to operate separate databases and then either multiple times a day or at the end of every day, settle up between balances and between basically Fedwire, money going through the Federal Reserve. And that's the only way banks and non-banks can settle their balances between each other. Now, the paper argues that tokenization combines messaging, reconciliation, and settlement all in one step. And they even borrow another concept that we talked about in Layered Money, which is this idea of atomic settlement or atomic swaps, in which one asset can be switched with another at the same time without a third party custodian or escrow service. The agreement is that the, the trade only happens if both sides settle or it doesn't settle at all. And so the dream of the BIS is to get central bank digital currencies, tokenized deposits, stocks and bonds to all operate on a programmable ledger that is unified or at least talks to each other in a way that atomic settlement can happen. This would eliminate a bunch of the errors that occur in messaging, settlement, reconciliation, and basically save the financial system a lot of cost and time and modernize the system away from wires, messaging, fax machines, and all of this ancient settlement technology, right? Now, where does this inspiration come from? Obviously, it stems from Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the first example of a cryptographically secured money that achieved usage at scale. And the Bank of International Settlements has looked at Bitcoin for a decade now and looked to Bitcoin to inspire future iterations of the monetary system. And that's where we get the first mentions of central bank digital currency. The idea that governments would take this cryptographic architecture and apply it to their own money. Now, if we want to talk about some of the more specific problems that occur within the financial system that tokenization aims to fix, we can think about just basic communication errors. So this paper says differences in operating hours and or holidays, as well as inconsistencies across operating systems, for example, in the form of different messaging standards, can lead to further delays, increasing settlement risk. So think about all the problems that happen in the current financial system that are just due to old technology, right? So when the BIS wants to suggest tokenizing everything, what they're talking about really here is replacing this ancient technology with more modern technology. And of course, the technology is inspired by Bitcoin, but doesn't really resemble a decentralized ledger like Bitcoin is, it's more of a centralized ledger. Joe and I take self-custody very seriously, and it's time for you to get your Bitcoin off of exchanges. This video is sponsored by Envoy, a simple Bitcoin wallet with powerful privacy features. It takes 60 seconds to set up. You can get your Bitcoin off of exchanges right now. There's no middleman. This is the way that Bitcoin was meant to be used, self-custody. Download it for free in the App Store or the Google Play Store today. Now, back to the video. Now, here is where the paper gets into where these ideas came from. And I have a few comments about this particular sentence. Crypto and decentralized finance offered a glimpse of tokenization's promise. But recent scandals have made it clear that crypto is a flawed system that cannot take on the mantle of the future monetary system. Now, there are a few things to talk about. First of all, no mention of Bitcoin, right? Instead of Bitcoin, it's crypto and decentralized finance. The second thing is that the paper says crypto and decentralized finance offered a glimpse. They use the past tense. Now, let me correct the paper and 
with the sentence that I would have written here. Bitcoin offers, not offered, but offers a glimpse of how little central banks and banks are trusted. But instead, the paper chooses to ignore the adoption of Bitcoin, the achievement of half a trillion dollars in market value, and instead chooses to focus on the fall of certain crypto companies and crypto projects. Next, take on the mantle. So is Bitcoin here to take on the mantle of replacing the entire monetary system? Definitely not yet. Bitcoin exists as a reserve asset and as a digital store of value. A store of value cannot immediately become the rails for an entire monetary system. It starts by becoming something that people want to own. It also happens to be something that can now instantly settle on a transaction platform such as Lightning Network, which are using real Bitcoin transactions. So the paper is actually suggesting that crypto has already failed and we should turn immediately to bank issued and central bank issued digital money and look completely past Bitcoin. Notice it does not mention Bitcoin at all. So the paper and the Bank of International Settlements is ignoring either blissfully or otherwise ignoring the benefits that have come with Bitcoin being an apolitical and neutral store of value that can be used to avoid currency devaluation, corrupt political regimes, capital controls. The Bank of International Settlements is ignoring all of these benefits and, and instead focusing on the failure of altcoins and cryptocurrency exchanges, fraudulent ones, and suggesting now that we move past this idea of Bitcoin entirely. So we obviously strongly disagree with this and we take it one step further. We suggest that Bitcoin will continue to exist and will continue to attract value in an era in which the Bank of International Settlements and other central banks are suggesting that we go toward central bank digital currency, stable coins, and tokenized deposits, right? The system of these CBDCs and privately issued digital currencies is more control in a liability-based system from the current banking architecture. It doesn't actually change the type of money that you're dealing with. It's still liability-based money. And if you want a money that is not liability-based, you still have Bitcoin. And Bitcoin will continue to be that independent money, and in this tokenized future, this BIS dream, Bitcoin will operate as the check on the new system of central bank digital currencies. It will continue to operate as an arbitrage mechanism to express the falling value of government-issued currencies. So look at a chart of Bitcoin in terms of Turkish Lira as the currency depreciates, Bitcoin is rewarded in the price of Turkish Lira. And that's because Bitcoin is an expression of how people are looking to exit their own home currencies. Bitcoin can operate in this CBDC and tokenized world and attract value away from government currencies, whether it be marginally or in a crisis and all at once. Now, the paper makes an interesting observation about stable coins and their relation to par, which means how close does the stable coin keep to the $1 it promises, and how that changes over the course of time, specifically in crisis times. So in this chart, it has several event risks, one being the FTX, Binance, supposed acquisition, the next being Binance backs out of the deal, the next being FTX CEO apologizes on Twitter, and then the next, the uh, Bahamas Securities freezing FTX assets. So you can see in each one of these times that the price of Binance's coin, USDC, and Tether all stray from the price of par. 
the paper argues that we should actually not be using stable coins, but instead tokenized deposits, which would flow through a CBDC, wholesale CBDC, as the ultimate settlement mechanism. So using this bank and central bank relationship instead of new financial non-bank entities issuing stable coins, we have tokenized deposits from banks that are, again, approved by the central bank with a tie-in with their own wholesale central bank digital currency to ensure everything maintains a value of par and we don't stray from par. So the paper argues tokenized deposits would not only preserve, but at times enhance some advantages of the current two-tier monetary system. Two-tier meaning central banks and the banks that are approved by those central banks. So how does all of this talk to each other? How do these banks, central bank digital currencies, asset classes, how does everything talk to each other? Well, it says, this year's chapter introduces the idea of a unified ledger as a blueprint for the future monetary system that can improve the old and enable the new. Now, this is going to unfold, guys. I don't know how long it's going to take for all these central bank digital currencies to be enacted, to launch, for tokenized deposits, and for the Bank of International Settlements vision to actually unfold here. What I can assure you is that Bitcoin will become the reserve asset in this CBDC tokenized deposit nightmare of a financial system in which we are locked in completely to the new cryptographic rails between central banks and banks. The only thing that we will be able to hold on to independent of this system is Bitcoin. Why? Because Bitcoin exists outside of the financial system as a commodity that comes from the Bitcoin algorithm, that comes from Bitcoin miners in a decentralized way, in a programmatic way, that doesn't fall into this discretionary central bank and banking system. And how do I know it's discretionary? It'll, it says it right here. The unified ledger sustained by a public-private partnership could overcome the underinvestment in cybersecurity that arises from its public good nature, thus increasing the system's overall resilience. It's talking about a unified ledger whereby central banks and regulated private participants take part in governance under well-established rules. Whose rules? Whose rules? Obviously, their rules. And will the rules change over time? Of course they will. Just like the rules change every couple years, the central bank puts on new policies, whether they're easing policies or tightening policies. The policies come from them at their discretion. So Bitcoin will be the reserve currency in this CBDC future because it will be the outlet for people's either dissatisfaction with the current system or their desire to hedge the current system. Bitcoin is proving to be a property that can't be restricted by governments. Governments will try, but they're understanding that Bitcoin is a protocol. It can't actually be stopped or shut down because its mining network exists around the world. So the future is a Bitcoin one, despite the BIS and other central banks continually constantly pushing central bank digital currency on us. Thanks for sticking with us today for another episode of the Bitcoin Layer. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and our newsletter at thebitcoinlayer.substack.com. Today's video is sponsored by Envoy, a simple Bitcoin wallet with powerful privacy features. It's time to get your Bitcoin off of exchanges and into self-custody today. This wallet is easy to set up takes only 60 seconds, no middleman, and you're using Bitcoin as it was meant to be used. Download it today for free at the App Store or Google Play Store. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever our next video drops. Thanks for watching.